Welcome to Electro Online, and here's a fourth example of how we solve the cube method by collapsing the cube. And I want to show you here that it doesn't mean that every resistor has to have the exact same value. It can be that some resistors have different values. So as long as the two that are being collapsed on top of each other have the same value, otherwise you don't have that perfect symmetry in the cube. So here what we're going to do is take a look at the circuit. We have point A and point B. We're supposed to find the equivalent resistance between those two opposite corners on the bottom of the cube. And you can see we can accomplish that by collapsing the cube. With other words, we can push this corner onto this corner. We can push this corner onto this corner so that we turn it into a single flat uh, circuit instead of a three-dimensional circuit. When we do that, we have to realize that these resistors will collapse on each other and those two resistors will collapse on each other and those are okay because they both have the same resistance even though it's not 1R, it could be 2R, 3R, it could be whatever. These could be 2R resistors, those could be 4R resistors, as long as we have that perfect symmetry across the collapsing portion of the cube. Because of that symmetry, we are able to do that collapsing technique. So that means that we end up with a flat circuit that looks like this. So let's see here, so we end up with, uh, this is point A right there. And so we have still this resistor right here that stays by itself. These collapse in on each other. So we end up with something that looks like this. And then this would be point B right here. Okay, and notice how we did that. Uh, maybe I'll use some color here. We collapse these two resistors together that form this resistor. And let me use a different color. We're going to collapse these two resistors together that form this resistor right there. And using a blue color, we're going to combine these two resistors together and that forms this resistor. And let's say I have a different color. Yes, I do. Then we'll combine these two resistors together that form this resistor and one more different color. All right, I'm running out of colors here. We'll take this and this resistor here and collapse it into that resistor right there. So that's how the circuit is collapsed. Notice the equivalent resistance. In each case, they act as if there are two resistors in parallel because there will be just as much current coming to this one as will be going to this resistor because of the symmetry. So we have two parallel branches, carry the same amount of current, put them together, that carries double the current, therefore half the equivalent resistance. So these two together will form a single 1R resistor those two combined will form a single 1R resistor. These have not changed because they don't combine with any other resistor. Those two will become an R over 2 resistor. These two an R over 2 resistor. And those two front and back R over 2 resistor. All right. So now we have uh, an equivalent circuit that is flat and much easier to solve. One more difficulty though, if you look at this, and maybe what I should do is collapse these two together, so I'll simplify it first a little bit more. So let's do that. So we have our point A right there. Whoop, getting a little ahead of myself. So this is my point A. Notice that if I add these two together because they're on the same circuit, there, that's a, what we call a series circuit right there. A half R plus an R is three halves R. So we can turn that into a single resistor that is three over two R. This resistor is still there, that is an R resistor. This resistor is still there, that is a, an R over two resistor. These two can, can be combined to form a single three over two R resistor. This one is still there, that's my one R resistor. And then come together here to point B. All right, so that's the same circuit, just a little bit simplified. These two combine and those two combine because they're in series. But now when you look at that, you realize that it is a delta circuit right here. These three resistors here form like a delta circuit. Let me show you what that means. So from point A, I have a resistor going in this direction. I have a resistor going in this direction. And then I have a resistor combining or connecting the two at the end here. This one here is a 3 over 2 R resistor. This here is an R over 2 resistor. And this one here is an R resistor. So that's what we call a delta circuit. And then you have these two resistors right here, which is, this would be a 3 over 2 R resistor. And at the bottom, we have a, a 1 R resistor. But we don't want to concern ourselves with that yet. We want to rewrite this into what we call a Y circuit. So we convert it from a delta to Y circuit, which means it's going to look like this. 
This is our R1 resistor, this is our R2, and this is our 3 resistor. So how do you convert what we call a delta circuit to a Y circuit? Well, it's called a delta to Y conversion. And the way that works is you take your first resistor, R1, and that is going to be equal to the product of the two adjacent resistors. So these are the two adjacent resistors to R1, so it would be equal to 3 over 2R times 1R divided by the sum of the three resistors in the delta. So here we add 3 over 2R plus R over 2 plus R. In the numerator, we'll get 3 over 2R squared. In the denominator, we get 3 halves plus a half, that's 4. Let's see here, that's 3 halves, that's 2, that's 3R. Because this denominator looks like it's a half plus a full plus 1 and a half. Yes, that's 3Rs. So this cancels out that one, and 3 halves divided by 3 would be 1 half. So this would be equal to 1 half R. So R1, this resistor right there, would be a half R resistor. We can do the same for R2 and R3. So in this case, R2 is equal to the product of the two adjacent resistors. That would be 3 over 2R multiplied times R over 2 divided by the denominator, which of course would be 3R, that would be the same as the other, because all the denominators are the same, it's simply the sum of the three resistors in the delta circuit. So this is equal to 3 over 4R squared divided by 3R. Notice that this cancels out that, and the 3 and the 3 cancels out, so that's 1 quarter R for the second resistor. And then the third resistor, R3, is equal to the product of the two adjacent resistors, that would be R times R over 2 divided by 3R. The sum would be the same, so that would be 1 half R squared divided by 3. Hmm, this one looks very different, doesn't it? R half times R, 1 half R squared divided by 3R. This cancels out this R right there, and we get 1 sixth R. So there's three different values for the three resistors in the Y circuit. So let me redraw this circuit right here. So here we have A going into what we call a Y circuit. Notice R1 is equal to 1 half R. R2 up here is equal to 1 quarter R. And R3 here is equal to 1 sixth R. And then we still connect that to those two resistors right here. Those two resistors right there. Okay. So we have this resistor, we have this resistor, and then they come together to point B. The top resistor is 3 over 2R, and the bottom resistor is R. All right, so now we have something that's a lot easier to solve. Notice we have two parallel branches, and we can simply connect or combine the two resistors in the top and the bottom branch. So this now becomes a circuit that looks like this. This is A, we have our first resistor into a branch, and then we're going to find the two equivalent resistors in that branch, and this is point B. Notice this is still 1 half R. Here we have two resistors, they're in series, we simply have to add them together. 1 quarter plus 6 quarters, because basically 3 halves is 6 quarters. 6 quarters plus 1 quarter is 7 quarters. 7 fourths R. In the denominator, 1 sixth R plus an R, that would be 7 sixths R. Okay, 1 6 plus 1, that's 6 6. 6 6 plus 1 6 is 7 6 R. So now we have those two resistors in parallel. We have to find the equivalent parallel resistance. We do that by taking the product over the sum. So we have R parallel is equal to the product 7 over 4 R times 7 over 6 R divided by the sum, which is 7 over 4 R plus 7 over 6 R. Okay, the product is very straightforward, so that would be equal to 49 over 24R. And the denominator, it's a sum. The common denominator is 12. 7 fourths is the same as 21 twelfths, so that would be 21 twelfths R, plus that would be 14 twelfths R, so 49 over 24R divided by 35 over 12 R. So now you can see that in the denominator we have a 24 and a 12. This becomes a 1, that becomes a 2. 
and we have a, 70, a 49 and a 35. They're both divisible by 7, so I can divide the numerator and the denominator by 7. So that becomes 7 over 2r divided by 5 over 1r. Oh, and of course I need to make this r squared, don't I? That's r squared, so the square cancels out that. And 7 halves divided by 5 would be 7 tenths r. You were probably saying that, oh, he's forgetting that r square again. So I do forget things sometimes. Anyway, 7 tenths r for the equivalent resistance of those two. So now we end up with a circuit that looks like this. We have point A. We have our first resistor, which is 1 half r. And then we have our second equivalent resistance, which we found to be 7 tenths r. And that becomes point B right there. And now all we have to do is combine those two together. 1 half r is the same as 5 tenths r. So 5 tenths plus 7 tenths would be 12 tenths r. So here we have our equivalent resistance between A and B. So we have, uh, let's see, 5, that would be 12 tenths r, which is 6 over 5r for the equivalent resistance. So the whole circuit, that entire cube circuit, with two r resistors in the bottom and one r resistors on the, per, on the vertical legs in the top, all collapses down to a single equivalent resistance of 6 over 5r. And that's all done by simply realizing the symmetry of the cube, collapsing the cube from a three-dimensional cube into a two-dimensional flat circuit, realizing here that this, when we clean it up, looks like a delta. We then do the delta to y conversion to find the equivalent resistance in the y circuit. We plug that in here, then we realize we have a parallel branch, which can then simplify this way. Using the product over the sum, we find the equivalent resistance of the parallel branch. Adding the two together, you get a single equivalent resistance of 6 over 5R. And that's how we do that. It's a slick way. It's not a short way, but it assures you to get the correct answer when you use this technique properly. That's how we do that.